Welcome everyone to another episode of the Health Made Simple Show. I'm your host, Dr. Bart, and today I got a great conversation with you. I'm going to dive into two keys for women's health and weight loss. Now, the direction I'm going to take this, we're going to keep it short and sweet today. The direction I'm going to take this, probably not the direction you think I'm going to take it. So we're going to navigate some different territory here today. And I'm probably also going to tiptoe on the edge of Man, you probably shouldn't be saying that. Nonetheless, we're going to go there. All right. Thank you once again for uh, joining here on the Health Made Simple Show. Keep doing things. Keep sharing out. Keep spreading love. I appreciate all of you that are doing that. This gives us an opportunity to continue to educate people basically free. So the more that you're able to spread it out, share the love, give us a five-star review anywhere and everywhere that you can. We appreciate that. All right. Let's dive in. The topic today, weight loss for women and two keys that I think are probably not discussed enough and you'll understand why and these are key so um listen up buckle down and listen up all right here we go number one ladies listen to this and i know you know this but i think it's important that you hear this and why do i think these are important these two things are important i get the opportunity almost every day that i'm in clinic which means almost what <laughs> feels like almost every day in my life which i'm fine with i love what i get to do every day i get an opportunity to talk about weight and uh, not only weight loss but women's health, uh, especially as women are going, you know, through perimenopause and into perimenopause, so many changes that the female body makes. Number one is what, this is the number one key is I want you to keep in mind. Ladies, you are not men. I know you know this, but it is so difficult sometimes to separate and compare yourselves to men. Most of what you see on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, all these results people are getting with all of these different fast fixes, these quick fixes. I might even be guilty of part of posting some of that stuff, but I will tell you, most of what you see, those fast fixes, these overnight successes, those are all for men. I'm going to go as far as saying this, that when you see like a 30-day program, I'll, I'll give you a very specific. If I put a guy on a 30-day program, I know the bonker type of results we're going to get. For some women, I will, but most likely that same 30-day program I'm most likely going to need to make it 90 days because you are different. You literally have different anatomy and it doesn't make it bad or good. It just means it's different. So we have to make the approach different. The challenge here is that the social media components, which you all will listen to, and I think social media is fantastic. It unfortunately p paints this picture that this fits for everybody and it does not. So with that being said, keep in mind that you are different specifically. I'm going to lean into this one little topic right here called your luteal phase. If you're still a cycling woman, right after ovulation, we'll call that right around say day 14 to 16, your body enters this luteal phase. And in that luteal phase, your body in, in theory is going to start to elevate the production of progesterone. To do so, especially in the later part, that last week to 10 days, prior to your cycle, hear me closely. Your body's trying to make this, uh, progesterone right before you go into menstruation. And when this happens, man, you gotta take it down a notch. This is the part I see so many women violate and this is gonna inhibit your all of your goals when it comes to weight loss. This one week right before your, your actual period come, before you start menstruating, you gotta tone it down. You can't be in CrossFit. You can't be nailing it on the Peloton. You can't be hammering it out. Rather, it's time to listen to your body. Can you still work out? Can you still exercise? Yes. But if you are breaking the body down, it will create hormone imbalances. It is one of the biggest eye openers for me that I've seen clinically that if women are trying to compete with their bodies all month long, they're doing the same workouts on the first day of the cycle as they might do on the 30th day, you're working backwards. You have to give your body an opportunity during this time to tone it back. This is the time that you can't get after it. So this is when you take a walk. This is when you go for a light ride on the bike, tone it all down, do some more yoga classes. That's the week right before your period comes. And then afterwards, go get it. But that five, six, seven days. And how do you know when it's coming? You know your bodies. When you get the sense, man, I think my period's coming too. That's when you need to tone it down. Get off the jamming Peloton bike. Get off thinking I have to crush it to get a couple ounces off my body. It does not work. You are actually creating problems. You are down-regulating your ability to produce progesterone and elevating estrogens. And this is part of the hormone imbalance that is making you gain weight, not lose weight, even though your diet 
is impeccable. Speaking of diet during this phase, your body needs some carbohydrates, ladies. And so even if you are doing elimination diets, you're doing some version of a car carnivore diet, during this phase, your body needs those carbohydrates to end up making more progesterone. So this is not the time to be doing intermittent fasting. And the, the, here's the beauty. Your body the whole time has been trying to tell you, I'm hungry. Now, listen, I'm, when I say carbs, let's not interpret this as, as chips and pasta and muffins and crackers and breads. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm still talking about the good stuff. Uh, a sweet potato, some broccoli, some carrots, some fruit, those things. But you're going to need those in order to help your body have the tools to produce the proper hormones. So quickie here, you're not men. You have different body parts and you have different needs, especially on a month-to-month -month basis. So right before your period comes, you got to tone things down. Give yourself some grace here. All right, the other part is this. Should should I'm going to shift to another gear here. Off that topic, and again, because you are not men, one day, if you haven't already, you're going to enter things like perimenopause. And I'm not going to go deep into this, but this is what I would tell you. If you haven't already, ladies, got involved in lifting weights, how many times are you going to need to hear it? You got to get involved in lifting weights for a couple of reasons. One, muscle mass is the longevity marker. It lets us know essentially how long we're going to survive on the face of this earth. So we got to get stronger. It means you're going to get uncomfortable. It's going to be a little inconvenient. You're going to have to go some unfamiliar territory. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. Get yourself a trainer, whatever it may take. You're going to have to get stronger. And the beauty of this, you are practicing to help your body have better capacity for stress that your body is going to go through. Like it or not, your body is going to go through massive stress dealing with the changes of your ovaries retiring and no longer producing the levels of progesterone, the levels of estrogen and testosterone that they used to. There's going to be this window, what we call perimenopause, that you're going to go through a transition. And the way that you handle anything is kind of going to be the way that you handle everything. And if you start preparing your body now by literally weightlifting, putting your body, your muscles under stress, you're going to be able to handle those times better. If you are and listen, you're set up, unfortunately, if you're not mindful, eating additional animal proteins and exercising strong stuff, like you're putting your body under stress, you're lifting heavy weights. If you're not doing that, you're sending messages to your body that you do not need these muscles and you're already going to be in a decline in terms of the hormones. So you're going to have less as we go. And what we don't want to produce is a body that's what we call skinny fat. Now, there's some challenges here because right now, let me go to the next topic here. So we're going to keep this tight. The other part of this, is vanity okay? Is vanity okay when it comes to weight loss? And I'll tell you what, it is to some degree. It's okay to get us motivated. Do I think that we all should have a, we should look at our best? I do. I think that is okay. Here's where it gets really tricky and sticky, especially nowadays when we have these weight loss drugs that are ripping pounds off of people. So here's the deal. If you want to lose weight, you got to know what level of weight you want to lose. For some people, you need to lose three, 30, 300. I don't know. The challenge is, is that most people don't know that number in the, the addiction becomes the weight loss, not health. And I see it now more than ever with these weight loss drugs. And that's why listen, I'm not an advocate of cheating the system. I'm not saying that it's not benefiting some people out there. You know what drugs I'm talking about. Yet when weight comes off that easily, with no effort, what do you think you're really learning? The answer is nothing. And I'm, and, and I'm going to encourage you, not discourage you. Listen, if you're out there, listen to me. Come do the consult. Let's talk about what you need to do as your body is going through this because you're, you're no doubt you are declining. You're creating deficiencies in the body. But here's the thing. Vanity is okay. If we're looking for weight loss, know what level of weight loss is okay by you. What I've witnessed clinically is that there's no end to the game that the continuous loss of weight is what people want. How do I hear it? What do I hear people say? Well, I've stagnated. I'm no longer losing. I'm stuck at a certain level and they're not even happy where they are, even though they've transformed their bodies. So ladies, listen, give yourself a little bit of grace. You do not need to lose all that weight, which moves me into the second topic here. This is probably the part where people are going to say, doc, stay in your lane. Don't talk about this. this. This is not what you need to be talking about. I'm going there anyways, because listen, I'm a healthcare provider trying to get people healthy. And I understand that this topic about weight loss, this obsession that we have, and it's okay. Listen, and guys too. So just, just so ladies know, us guys, we are just 
most of us who still care about our bodies and our health, are we are still just as vain. It's just not in your face as much as it is for most women. So it is important for us that we still, the one, those of us who still care about our health, we absolutely care whether or not our bellies are getting too big, whether or not we still have muscles in our shoulders or in our arms and our legs. We do care unless we've given up on our health. And yes, and I'm speaking to a lot of guys out there right now. If you've given up on the idea that your belly is bigger than your, your chest and your shoulders, that's a problem. It's a problem, gentlemen. It means you're not as healthy as you once were. Anyways, this is where people are going to probably tell me, I don't know, be quiet, but I'm not going to because this is important. Listen, ladies, please give yourself some grace. Society has made us believe that as society has made us believe that we want super skinny model type women. We do not. Please hear me when I say that. We do not want that. I'm going to tell you what we want. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. I'm going to tell you what we want. We want a woman, any female, whether it be anybody, just trust me when I say this. The most attractive thing that a female can bring to this earth is two things. One is that they bring confidence and kindness. Confident women is one of the most attractive things. Confident men is one of the most attractive qualities of a human being. It has nothing to do with weight gain or weight loss. The second part of this is kindness. We often, quite frankly, need to look for our women to bring the love back into our culture. And that's okay. You're good at it. You're better than us men at it. And the more you do it, the more attractive you become as a human being. And I say this so you're not always trying to judge yourself by cultural standards, by the standards you might see in Hollywood and all that other crap that does not exist in most of our real lives. So I'm saying, number one here, recognize you're not men for a bunch of reasons that we just discussed here. You're different and give yourself a little grace there. And my second thing is give yourself some grace that Hollywood standards are not the standards we need to go by. And rather, if, if for some reason you're thinking, well, I want to look better to make myself more attractive to the world. There's nothing wrong with that. Know that probably the single highest quality that is the single most attractive quality that someone could possess and share with another human being would be this. It is smiling. Smiling is one of the better qualities that makes everyone attracted to that individual. And I'm not saying attractive in a weird, creepy way. I mean, attracted. People that smile more are more friendly. People want to discuss things with them. People want to talk to them. People want to be around them. People want to affiliate with them because they look like they're happy and they have good energy. And I will tell you, I promise you, and as men, that is what we are looking for, women that are confident and that have kindness in their heart and then also can smile so they can bring a little love to this earth that we have, especially in times right now where things can get a little bit rough. So with that being said, if I have crossed the line and I've potentially stepped into the wrong lane, sorry, too bad, did it anyways, and I won't get off that one because it is not an easy route. These topics, things like weight loss for men and women, Yet, if we get back to the basics, what are we trying to really do? Feel our best, look our best, be our best. And with that being said, I think this, this podcast here today gives us some insights to it. So I hope that this hits for some of you in a conversation, in a way, in a place in your heart and in your mind that helps you move forward. Give yourself some grace. Know that you're awesome and know that anytime you decide to make a decision for yourself to level up your mind, your body, overall wellness, that is absolutely awesome. Thank you for listening in here today in the Health Made Simple Show. I look forward to seeing you in the next podcast.